Last we left off. Our adventures had failed to negotiate with the wanted arcane practitioner, Egreth Runai. And during these failed negotiations, the Volik state assassin Kessa Lenkov decided to eliminate Egreth from the conversation. After dispatching the wizard, Kessa vanished back into the shadows, offering an additional sum of coin to the group if they left the wizard to die. As Egreth fell, her automatons attacked the group. During the encounter, Kime Stormbreaker was knocked unconscious from a psychic attack, but Turkseen quickly cast Vortex Warp to bring Kime to safety so he could be healed up. After destroying the tealed skinned Majin and the Servitor Throlls, the group inspected Egress' lifeless body, finding a few magical items to identify later, along with a hefty spellbook. The group investigated the rest of the secret factory, which appeared to make constructs that were to be shipped and sold to various buyers. One of these buyers, according to the ledger, was the Queen's Waif, a thieves' guild from Steeplight. On the lower level, the group discovered a large portal that was active, presumably Egress' escape route. The group sent Gilfie through to see what was on the other side but Turkseen lost his connection to Gilfi as the differing movements in time were too much for Turkseen to handle. He immediately returned Gilfi to his side and learned that the portal led to a plane or realm of clockwork devices, gears, cogs, and constructs. It was hard for Gilfi to describe since it was so bizarre and such a foreign concept. The group decided that this was enough information to satiate their curiosity, and headed back to their horses where Kesselenkov was hanging out. She paid the group, and provided them some information about Egreth and the nation of Prospero, before heading off into the factory to clean up the evidence. The group decided to take a long rest before journeying through the night to hopefully avoid contact with the nation of Prospero, while they make their way back to the town of Night Hollow. During their rest, Panoply noticed Kessa leaving a satchel of notes with Simon that were to be delivered to the two Volok ambassadors, Erfonia Zais and Sabira and Helene. Panoply decided to stay up all night and keep watch, exhausting herself in the process. As a group awakens from their long rest, it is roughly 2 a.m. in the morning, a dark, chilly night with the mountain pass ahead of you. And this is where we begin today's session. What all would you like to do? Arvin would like to toss pebbles and sticks at, at Panoply to test her reflexes. She toss. Snar snarls at you. Oh, what the hell are you doing? You're too tired. You didn't even notice. I know... It's very annoying. Me or the tiredness? Both. Fair. Uh, are we uh, through the Nahusian Pass at this point? Nope, you guys have taken a long rest. It's 2 a.m. and the secret factory entrance is not too far behind you. Gotcha. So, group, I assume we need to get out of this place before anybody happens to stumble upon us, correct? Yeah, let's try and make the road by morning, and then we can go off, like, in daylight. Giddy up. You should go first. You've got too much energy. I feel great. Kaim, and then Turksy, and then I'm gonna go last. Kind of put back on his armor, jump on his horse. Feel, I feel great. I feel light, you know. Just getting all that heavy leather armor off, being able to move about more freely. These things are pretty cool. Anyway, enough about me. I would like everybody to roll a d6. Oh. Oh, 
but that's a good start. Getting it out of the way. Anvils are good, right? Okay. <laughs> no reason. Um, you said Arvin is leave it, leading the group? Yeah, he is. Yep. I'll be right behind him, mostly. Alright, Arvin, I would like you to make a survival check. Easy. Oh, God. Oh, I wouldn't worry about it. Okay, I gotta find it. Alphabetically, what does that come after? Okay, Arvin's doing a decent job of following a path. Um, sometimes you're not sure what path it is. <laughs> it is a path. But it's heading north, so you'll definitely hit the Nahujan Pass eventually. About four hours into your journey, you all come across a little ravine that is rather dense with fog. Do we recognize this from the way back? Oh god, we're loading. Uh, does this look familiar as when we crossed it on the way? No, it doesn't look familiar. Oh boy. And there are bats flying through the sky at night, but you also hear crows and ravens about. And as you enter this pass, you see ahead of you, well, three of you see a single dead body, whereas Panoply with her extended sight can see another dead body off in the distance. I'm not gonna lie, this is really cool. It's like the fog in the bats. I'm not sure if the dead body itself is creating line of sight. <laughs> it might be. It might be, yeah. No, it's on the corner of a... Oh, okay, okay. The, so this is a raised cliff facing. Okay, okay. So once you get to here, you can't see past it unless you're elevated or to the side. All right, guys, my leadership ends when the path ends. And I think we've come to that point. Oh. Well, Kaim will kind of walk over to the body. Can he get there? Yeah. Uh, all right, tie up Mike and I can Ben and Jerry. Not too long, right. though. Tying them up. Yeah. Okay, Kaim, as you move forward to this body, it it looks like it was once a human. Once? It kind of just looks like a pile of skin now. Only skin? No bones? Meat? It doesn't look that way. What? That's usually the delicious part of the body. I think you... I see another body up there. It... I mean, it is... basically a hunk of flesh. Uh, or a hunk of skin with some flesh. Just a, a bag of skin. A bag? What? We should we should hurry past here. Like, just let's, ride let's the horses let, more. Let's let Gofi's cut ahead a little bit. Okay. As Turkseen says that, Kaim, I need you to make a stealth roll. Oh, fuck. <laughs> and did you just use the term bag of skin? A bag yes. of skin. Huh. I've been described like that. 
when performing athletics. Well, that's good. Oh. Um, as you move up toward the second dead body and you hear Turksian say out, hey, let's let Gilfi look ahead, you see off in the distance a third dead body, but this time there is a creature hovering above it. Is it carrying bones? Hovering like a bird on the wing, or just like... Well, it's on top of the humanoid, and this long, proboscis-like snout is embedded deep into the body of the humanoid. Most delicious parts, indeed. Uh, it. I'm gonna go over to the side here and try to hide. And as you do that, it looks up and notices you. Fuck. Hello. And sorry, let's. Here we go. I'm trying. This is what you see. Oh god, he's cute. And it lets out this strange guttural noise as it sees you as you try to dodge around the corner. Um, let's have... Well, since Kaim's initiated all of this, Kaim, roll a, a, a d2. Flip a coin. Slash roll d2. Okay. The lifeless body just about 15-20 feet ahead of you starts moving as the sack of skin animates into this creature. Oh my god. <laughs> That's nasty. He's so cute. animates. Can you just... And with that, I would like everybody to roll for initiative. I gotta take a screenshot of him. He's cool. And I'm always last. Well, you were trying to hide while we're ready to fight. That's a lot of skin bags. Well, I'm rolling for the horses just in case. Oh, okay. And then Jerry has saved us more than once. I know. Quick, lure him. Kite him over to the horses. All right, Panoply. You hear this shrill noise, and from there you see one of the lifeless bodies animate into a literal animated shell of skin. Is it dark hair? It is. It is about... Well... If you get, it's about six a.m. If you get under the trees, it'll be dark. I choose to peek out under the a, tree over the top. Sun is barely cresting over, and you're in the mountains, so it's there's dark spots. Is this dark? Is this dark enough? Yes. Okay. As soon as Kaim goes ahead, I start pulling an arrow and shaking my head. And you just see her like looking tired and getting this arrow out. Sure enough, as soon as the shriek comes and she sees anything move, she shoots at Boneless. Hmm. Decides to put favored foe on that. Okay. Do you think that's a descriptor, or do you think that's his name? I don't know. I mean, it's out of character anyway, but... <laughs> Secondary attack... Hit. Okay, 
Okay. It's just like you just yeah. She's just under the tree trying to stay in the darkness. Like, oh god, what did we get ourselves into? Arvin, as you were tying up the horses, you hear Kaim mutter essentially some profanities, clink clink hide around and hear Panoply move off and shoot her bow. Wang! And I don't see anything. Naturally. Uh, from where you are, you can barely see Kaim. Right. I don't see any creatures or anything. Not from there. Okay. Well, I get 30 feet of movement. Is that right? Yep. Okay. We're going to move up a little bit, find out what Panoply's doing. Oh, I see a thing up there. The hell's all of its bones? All right. Kaim has not done anything. So. Uh oh. My thing crashed. Uh oh. It says reload application. Okay, I'm clicking that button. Uh, I'm gonna end up doing a bardic inspiration on Mr. Kaim. Okay. That'd be your bonus action. What do you want to do for your action? Uh, I think I'm out of range to do anything else. So that might just be it. Isn't your, um... Vicious Mockery 60 feet? Here we go. I loaded. Ah, oh, 55 feet away. Okay, well, let me start off by trying Bardic Inspiration. Here you go, Kaim, you're inspired. And that sounds like a great idea. Let's try some vicious mockery on that guy. How do you mock the bag of skin? Uh, if you go skinny dipping, what do fat people do? Chunky dunks. Oh boy. That's all I got. Oh, come on! <laughs> I'm so unimpressed with your mockery. It was so good. That was off the top of my head. All right, I'm done. That counts as critting kind. <laughs> Horses are a little nervous. The creepy creature that Kaim saw. Flies forward. Goes up about 20 feet in the air. And you feel this ravenous force in the air as the creature summons some children. Ugh. I hate kids. <laughs> now, why do you hang out with Kaim? Hey. <laughs> Five children. What? Are they all just chilling by him? Nope, within 30 feet. Hello. Quick, Tirxian, get Ben and Jerry into this. That is that creature's turn. Tirxian, your turn. Okay. Um, first, Turkseen's going to move up about 30 feet next to Arvin. Uh, really... Hopefully... Nope, I guess he's just going to stay here. Um, and he is going to 
expend four charges of the Wand of Magic Missiles. And he's going to launch one magic missile at uh, each. Its minimum damage is two, right? Three. Yes. Okay. I'm not going to make you walk through the, the whole thing because they have two hit points. Sweet. So this one, this one, this one, and this one are the ones that I can see. Zip, zap, boop, and doop. And that will end his turn. Four charges is four missiles. Wait, wait, wait no. No, oh. one charge is a level one. Oh, missile. I'm sorry. I meant two charge. You're right. So two charges, the magic one of magic missiles. Okay, four, sorry. Four so bolts. one. So one is left. Yeah, I can't see one of them. I think it was that one. Uh. uh. I can I can see that yeah that one you just put back I cannot see. Okay. All right, cool. That'll end my turn. All right, the boneless moves forward to where it thought it saw Kaim, sees Kaim, and it starts a different music track. How does it travel? It literally... Oh, it doesn't move that fast. Is it just kind of like oozing across the ground? Yeah. <laughs> so it has to sprint across the ground to get to Kaim. Oh, wait, no, no. It moves 30 feet. I was looking at the wrong creature. It gets there, and it slams into Kaim. I put my shield up. Ha ha! Yes! And it's second attack. Also a miss. Kaim, it is your turn. Uh, I will bonus action Echo. I want him right here. And actually, hold on. Let's put him right here in the air with this guy. And I will attack the one next to me. I don't think I need that. You flay the skin into pieces. Ew, it's all over my sword. It's pretty gross. And uh, that'll end my turn. Alright, Gilfie's turn. Okay. Uh, Gilfie is going to fly at the Strigoi. And use the help action for, I guess, on Turksan. Okay. And then fly away. All right, top of the round. The body in front of you all animates into another boneless. All right, Panoply, your turn. How nervous do our horses look? Uh, pretty nervous. Is it dark hair? Yeah. 
going to spend my action trying to make an animal handling check to calm the horses. It's okay, guys. It's it's fine. I roll it up. That is a gross picture. That's what we're fighting. That's what's on Kaim's sword right now. Uh, I'd still give you your attack. Okay. Call that a bonus action. Okay. Uh, the boneless, then. The new boneless. I'm assuming Kaim can deal with whatever's up there, or hoping. And I and shall... Talk. You may feel something whistle by your ear. That's my turn. Arvin, your turn. Um. Uh, well, I see this nasty slime-looking thing in front of me. I don't like it. I don't think my normal attacks are going to do much against it, though. So, we're going to start off with a Bardic Inspiration on Tyrkian. Oh, I love that music. And let's make fun of this other one. Maybe I'll be more successful. Although I don't have another joke handy. You've got a bone to pick with him. Oh, there we go. That's going to be a one. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that was bad, too. These things are so wise. Do you want to move? <laughs> no, I'm good. Turn is done. All right, the Strigoi. Uh, Kaim, you'll get an attack of opportunity against it. Let's go. Uh, the one in the air, right? Yeah. Ooh! Ow! Let's go. Where are you going, Birdie? Uh, I can fly 40. Oh no, it's out of range! It's gonna fly toward Kaim. Hi, how you doing? And it makes one claw attack against Kaim. Oh, it hits. And you feel like its claws have acid that is just eating away where it strikes. That wasn't nice. And then it tries to poke you with its proboscis. Oh, oh what? what? Oh, no! <laughs> oh no! As it hits you with the proboscis, you suddenly feel something enter into that wound into your body and pump you full of necrotic damage, which I think you're resistant to. Yep. So I am. You didn't take as much. You took eight as opposed to thirteen. Oh my god. Um, however, Do I need to heal it... seven? Uh, it did it already. Okay. It auto halved it. And it heals five damage. All right, Turkian, your turn. All right, uh, Turkian's going to 
uh, shout at it and cast Tasha's Mind Whip. Ooh, great dice. Jeez oh. Louise, what is with your saves? Oh. Well then. Wow. It's one of those nights. <laughs> and with that, Turkson's gonna back up towards the horses and end his turn. Alright, Kaim, it is your turn. Oh, Kaim is gonna freaking go ham on this guy, so we're gonna attack him. Oh, I didn't add the little thing. Oh, oh yeah, baby. Oh, well, well. My, my, how the turns tables. And he is going to bonus action teleport. <laughs> And that'll end his turn. Alrighty. Gilfie's turn. Alright. Uh, Gilfie is going to... She's already right here. So she's going to use the help action on... Let's see. Turkcian again. And then she's going to fly away. All right, this little Sturge is going to fly toward Kaim and try to blood drain him. Oh, aren't you cute? Oh, oh that teetered. Are right, you a little snappy, aren't you? I mean, it's cute. It looks like this. Aww. <laughs> it's so little. Quit bugging me. And the boneless uh, does what? Arvin posted in Discord and slurps toward Arvin. Lorp. One slam. I'm holding up my bracers in front of me in an X. <laughs> Two slams. <laughs> Wonder Bard. Oh, oh no, oh, it not that didn't time. work. <laughs> what a surprise. It slurped and um, slurped against me. Oh, it's if both attacks hit. Okay. Panoply, your turn. Is it dark he here? Uh, one square over it is. Mm -hmm. I'll just edge over here where it's still dark. <laughs> and then I will... I saw that thing, like, poke something into Kaim, which looked really gross. And switches targets to that the strike away. It's looking pretty beat up. Good! That's my turn. Arvin. Oh boy, Th this goopy thing in front of me is not making me very happy. It wants to hug you. Slurping, slurping, and slurping. Gosh, I don't really have any good up close. Do a dagger or rapier? Yeah, I could poke it for zero damage, but I'm looking at Dissonant Whispers to see if that would work against this thing. I think it would. It's a yeah, slight they're... damage. I don't think that would be resistant. Right. Anything that forces it to save is not at disadvantage, too. Alright, we're going to cast Dissonant Whispers against the bag of slime in front of me. Bro, what's up with these rolls? <laughs> We're playing on Legendary. Yeah, no joke. 
Um, you still got Bardic Inspiration and Kime's too far away. I, I do want to inform you, though, that the sack of flesh is bloodied. That is good to know. Uh, I don't know if I'd be able to tell or not. It probably just looks more of the same. Where is Kime? He's up in the darkness, like... I'm in the top. Yeah, I already, I already have Bardic Inspiration. I haven't used it yet. Okay, I don't I haven't needed it. Okay, my turn is done. All right, the Strigoi is going to claw at your Echo. Hmm, misses. <clears throat> it's going to proboscis your Echo. Wow, misses. Yeah, you used all your good rolls on saving throws. All right, Turkson, your turn. Turkson's going to move up 15 feet. And he's going to cast Firebolt at this Trigoy. With advantage. Nice. Then he's going to spend 15 feet of movement to move back and end his turn. And he just flaps its wings in this blaze of fire as this very horrific shrieking noise comes out of it as it falls to the ground in a very crispy burnt pile. The remaining Sturge is just going to try to attack Kaim. Hey, it hits! So, it attaches to Kaim like a mosquito oh, God. and is sucking his blood. So, yeah. You okay? Kaim, your turn. Do I carry it with me if I move? Yeah. Okay. Um. You can use your action to detach it, or you can try to hit it off your body. Uh, I'll leave it there for a bit. My echo will go over to help out Arvid and attack the sack of skin. Thanks, pal. Uh, I can't see myself. One second. I need to attack from myself on the target. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, god damn it. I didn't want to do that. Um, yay! And the Kaim is going to bonus action teleport. <laughs> and, um, that'll end this turn. Arvin, you want to do something about this? Petty? Gilfie! Gilfie, eat the mosquito! Wait, the owls eat mosquitoes. It is Gilfie's turn. Alright, uh... Gilfie... Everything's so far away now. Uh... Gonna fly... 60 feet. Not in range of anything. She'll dash. Come another 60 feet. I'll do 45 feet right here and an ender turn. Panoply, you see something attached to Kaim's arm. She calls out, hold very still. He's like feeling, wailing around. Get it off me. He is not still at all. Oh, she's going to try. Hold still. She, you hear it from the dark. 
What? This thing hurts. Woo! Eagle eye. Sturge eye. This arrow goes whizzing over your arm and hits the Sturge, and you feel it detach, and you see its long proboscis, like, leave your body. Whoa, you got like alien probe twice in this encounter. <laughs> you been a little woozy there? I lost a little blood. I think Ooh. I'm okay. You think it's uh contagious or anything? Mosquitoes carry a lot of diseases. <laughs> Panoply starts untying the horses. Let's get going. Oh god, I think I have the West End Cure virus. Oh no. How hurt uh, are you guys? Time's not feeling very good. You know how okay. when you got bit by something and all of a sudden your mind is playing games on you and you think that you're infected with something and so you start feeling a little woozy? Mm -hmm. I make berries and I give Arvin oh, I'm good. Uh, one. Well, I'm going to give you one. Oh, okay. Thank you. I give nine to Kaim. I was gonna eat eight of them and take the last one and kind of rub it off of what, rub it on the spot where it got, he got this, this, bit. That's not how that's not how it works, dude. Uh, no, well, just, let's wash it out with your water skin. You're probably <laughs> you're probably smearing germs. <laughs> you had germs all over your hands, dude. I'm sure how this works. Oh, I will heal for eight. Do you need a healing word as well? Uh, 1d4? Yeah, I probably would. Okay. Let's do it. Can we agree, as I untie the horses, that we, if we do encounter a group with a nation of Prospero, we should not fight them, Kaim? Did I give you eight? Uh, no, it did not. Not yet, at least. I don't know what healing was doing wrong. I healed myself for eight with the good berries. Yeah, add another eight tears. I can't math. And, um... No, I'll save it. I'm good. No, no, never mind. I'll use it. I'll have healing words myself or healing hands. All right, I'm gonna hop on Jerry. Yeah, Mike. I presume the creatures had nothing of value on them. Do you want to look? Yeah. Um, roll a investigation check. Investigation. I investigated. You're looking through them, uh... The two that are very much sacks of skin, you're unable to find anything on them. The one to the north, you find uh, two gold pieces and five silver. That That's one weird. looks like it is not a sack of skin yet. Yet? Well, you interrupted the Strigoi's dinner. That was a bit scary. It's pretty gross. Back to the horse. Uh. 
on onward. How about Arvin and I go first, and you make sure nothing hurts Turxian? I look at Kaim. Okay. I think we should go. Like we should have almost be to the main road. I think. Well, that was creepy. Yeah. Were we able to identify the body or anything? Or is like face completely eaten and unidentifiable? Uh, if you want to, you can try. Uh, Arvin was unsuccessful. He found some gold. I just want to see if we recognize the person. Uh, you could either roll survival or investigation. Okay. Uh, you don't recognize them, but going through a Again, you do find some information that leads you to believe that these individuals might have been part of the Queen's Waif. Oh. How did you notice that? You must have seen their sigil. Isn't that isn't the group, Arvin? I know of them from Steep Light. Not a whole lot. Maybe they were coming to pick up the stuff that she sold to him, or something. Maybe they're picking up a delivery. Yeah. Yeah, totally unrelated to us. Yeah. You're not. Huh? What? You're not being like hunted, are you? I don't don't think so. I don't know. We've run into some weird things on our way, but nothing specific, other than. My name on a note. Wait, what did we originally see? Oh boy, that was a long time ago. Well, you asked me to keep watch when we first went to Night Hollow, right? Yeah, it was a long time ago. People were actually looking for me, but that's in the past. I think we're good. Unrelated. Are they still looking Confident. for you? No, there's no way. Have you seen this face? No one can stay mad at me for long. It's a very punchable face. <laughs> Thank you, Kai. Panoply looks openly skeptical. Anyway, we need to hoof it. If we want to make Yeah, let's let's go. We need to get to the road and then probably get off the road pretty soon after. Plus the horses are gonna be tired. <laughs> Future reference, if we run into any more foggy ravines, maybe don't charge ahead. I mean, you had to cross it. Out of curiosity, oh, we've been traveling together for about three weeks. Looks like, potentially. Uh, Look at the calendar. Yeah, from the 16th to the 37th. Okay. Just trying to think when Arvin says it's been a long time, whether he meant in-game or out-of-game. Both. Yeah, your session zero would have probably been about four weeks ago. Got it. Three weeks is... An age. It's enough for some parties to go from 1 to 20. Alright, you continue on through this pass. Nothing else horrendous happens. Um, at about 10, a little after 10 in the morning, Thank you. 
you'll reach the Nahusian Pass. Been journeying for about... Well, you'd have taken a, a short rest in there somewhere. For the horses, you all can take a short rest button if you need to. Ooh, that's good for health. Can I... So, can I tell which way is, like... So we're going to our left. <laughs> Let's go to Night Hollow. If I look to the right of where we emerge a little bit, are there s a lot of signs of travel at all? Like, can I tell if somebody's passed recently? Fresh horse pucky? Yep, yeah, you can make a survival check with disadvantage for being exhausted. Too tired. Too tired. At least I don't fall in the horse shit. Alright, so it's actually a little after 11. Your horses have traveled as much as they can in a day without potentially reaching exhaustion. What do you guys say we just go, like... N go like half hour north of here because like any Prospero people will turn south right towards yeah anywhere far enough off the path I think was our just main like goal. lead them I mean, if we lead them half hour that should be enough right it's woodsy here right like it's dense ish mm -hmm. yeah that sounds great yeah let's let's do that I'm I'm really tired guys. <laughs> That was maybe not the best idea. You want me to carry you? I, I got a horse. Hey, go walk. What? Right. Never mind. She's so tired at all. It's like still trying to figure it out. Let's head on over. I think I'm taller than you are, Kaim. But thanks. I'd imagine you're a lot lighter than me. Are our physical characteristics on our character sheet? Mm, oh yeah, description. Sure. Found yeah, it. it's under biography. If he filled it in. I'm a skinny boy. I'm not. Alright, so you all will spend you know about half hour traveling to find a safe location. Another half hour maybe more to set up camp and everything. If you take a long rest, it'll probably be about 8.30, 9 o'clock at night. And how far away are we from Night Hollow? A day or two? Uh, two days journey, or... Two days? Okay. Two, uh, two eight-hour stints, essentially. Do we want to travel through the night again, or...? Honestly, like, what if we just stayed overnight? Because that would ensure that they pass us, wouldn't it? I mean... I'd hope. Can you... Well, it's a long way back to the road at this point. I was going to say you could put something on the road, but... And I could have Gilfie fly up above. She gets a good vantage point. She can probably see for quite a white ways off. That's a great idea. We I'll wouldn't just... have to wait any longer if they happened to pass by. Yeah, I'll just have Gilfy uh, just hanging out, doing circles above us. Simon, did you get the stuff that Kessel left you? Yes. Okay, good. Um... 
Panoply's like really tiredly starting a fire and her little pyramid of sticks keeps falling over. She finally does and then I'm I'm just gonna sleep for a while, you guys, if you wanna I'll hunt when I get up. Yep, she just uh, roll, rolls over. Am I, I able to take, take am I able to take two watches and still get a long grass or no? If we're, gonna, if we're gonna stay a while. Well if you're st if you're essentially extending it through morning, then yeah. I can take uh first watch. Feeling good. Yeah, Turkson's gonna definitely stay up for a little while. He's been doing his best not to pull out the orb and study it, but it's been really difficult. And now that we're just going to be sitting for a while, he wants to examine it more closely. Alrighty. So we can do that. You said you had Gilfy flying around? Yeah, she's um, doing like big circles around the whole pass area, just keeping an eye out. Okay. Um, let's have everybody roll a d6. Okay, good. Wow. Um, I need Gilfy to roll a stealth check. I don't think that's at advantage. I think it's just perception checks. Yep. Okay. Uh, uh, about so eight. About four hours in, Gilfie notices that there's a campfire off in the distance. And Gilfie can make out about four humans, five robots, and a dog. But it seems like they're setting up camp. Uh, yeah, their camp has probably been set up for a bit. Okay, so they're they're probably stopped here for the day, and they're planning on spending the night. Mm-hmm. And are they? Was it east or west of us? Um, probably a little northeast, or sorry, northwest. Northwest. So they will probably be passing us if we were to stay here and they were to break camp on their way mm -hmm. okay um well presuming she comes back and relays that to me um how long have we been here we, we've all taken the long rest at this point uh this is about four hours in four hours in okay um she lets me know that I'll just give her instructions to go back and watch them. And if they seem like they're breaking camp to come, let us know immediately. And I will let who's ever awake know that it seems like there's a uh, camp and they will most likely be passing us this direction, but Gilfie's going to go watch them and make sure we have time. But if we can finish the long rest for those who need it, I want to try and get that done. Okay. I don't know who's awake, though. 
Um, I was for the first. Not it. I'd probably take uh, the next one. Okay, that's been about four hours, so I can tap out. Ah, what I here? You're up, Kaim. Going to bed. All right. Good night. Um, Kaim, make a perception check, and Gilfy, make a perception check. Okay. Gilfi notices that probably one individual, two individuals, two robots, and a dog are moving your way. And this would be about when you guys are finishing your long rest. Okay. Uh, um, about how far away were they? Um. They're probably originally about half a mile from your camp. Okay. Maybe a mile. But. You said we got a long rest in? Yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, Turkson will... I'll see. All right, guys. Time to move now. Yep. There's time a... will kick dirt into the fire. Put it out. Panoply wakes up and everybody's frantically getting some... What is happening? We got uh, company. We got to go. There's a Prospero camp about... Um, somewhere between a half mile mile away seems like a few of them are starting to come this way we should probably get a move on we should get back to the road and ride hard west I guess because then they'll have to pick which way to go I will go first okay we'll untie the horses get everybody ready to go Um, let me have trade me horses. Like maybe one of one of the give me one of the faster horses. And Panoply will try and ride a little ahead of the group slightly. Uh, Gilfi tells you that she saw a bird just like herself uh, last night, or not last night. It's the same day, but like during the day. So, like, another owl? Mm-hmm. Uh, just like... Her. She thinks so. Like, she just saw it randomly throughout the day, or specifically while we were camping? Uh, while camping, basically doing the exact same thing that Gilfie was doing. Okay. Well, they uh might know we were here. Seems they will like, know. You know. I look, I look at the camp, and there's like a fire, like, and yeah. I mean, our only chance is just moving quickly. Let's go. What's our goal? Are we just trying to get to Night Hollow or what? Yeah. 
And if they're chasing us down, is that going to help? We're going to be able to defend ourselves there? I well, mean, better than here. Yeah, it's it's a neutral town, so Prospero doesn't have any real authority there. I think our ultimate goal right now, though, is to just not run into them. If they decide they want to pursue us rather than the lab, then that's a decision we can make in the future. But let's hope they're more interested in the lab than us. Ooh. If they catch us, Arvin talks, though. I look at Arvin like, yeah. I like talking. Uh, oh, good. Okay. Um, we're gonna do some skill checks here. Oh, God. At least you lost your exhaustion. So, first check is going to be a survival check for everybody. Oh, come on. That landed on a mountain and it kicked my dice over. <laughs> that was going to be an 18. Who made your map? Get a refund. Yeah. Now I need everybody to make a stealth check. Fuck. Stupid mountain. Well, at least disadvantage didn't hurt you. And then the last one is an athletics check. Oof. Okay. Minus one plus one? How do I get a minus one on athletics? Your strength? Oh, it's strength. Oh, I was thinking acrobatics. Sorry, old mood alarms. So you'll leave your camp in a hurry, pack up what you can, clean up what you can, and try to stick to the the shadows of the trees. It is becoming nighttime. You didn't fully do what Panoply wanted to do and sleep through the night and wait until morning. Uh, some of you aren't exactly prepared for the pace that you're going at, and we're going to do, 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 do. Oh, okay. Nope. So you, you weren't exactly prepared to just rush out like that. None of you got breakfast. None of you sort of did your morning routines, you know, Kime didn't poop, all of that sort of stuff. So as you make your way through the forest back to the Nahusian Pass to try to get away from the group, you all do notice that a robotic dog is trailing you all at a distance, but it's definitely tracking you. And up in the sky, you see an owl just like Gilfie. No, I don't think it changes what we're doing, though. No. Let's... I mean, obviously we tried to be a little stealthy, but... We're not stealthy, they know we're out. here, but, you know, it's yeah. like, we'll just head Who? back to Night Hollow. Who, where... Uh, is Simon? Is he? I assume he's riding one of the horses with someone. He's probably bagged up. Yeah, I'm assuming he's in Kaim's backpack. Yeah. Okay. Oh no, you left Simon behind. No, I just didn't know if he was just out openly out with just his cloak, or he was originally. I'm gonna ask Simon, like, we're rushing along, I'm gonna pull back my horse a little bit and just come even. Simon, do you know if the Nation of Prospero would dissemble you if they caught you? Uh, 
Simon looks at you inquisitively. I am not sure. I presume they would study me. I don't want to find out. Let's hope we don't have to. Oh, thanks. It doesn't auto remove it? It should remove one, but it didn't. Um, anywho, this would be asked later as you all are moving at a fairly fast pace to just put distance between you and the nation of Prospero. Uh, after about four hours, you would like you all to make a perception check. Ooh. Oh god. Wait, I'm watching short circuit clip. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you doing? Perception? Yes. Does Gilfie get one too or no? Yeah. Got mountains? Get, get the. Can I roll to the side, like on the forest? How do I do that? And you can, like, right click <laughs> and drag your screen around. <laughs> oh, well. But there's mountains everywhere. Then I don't have an excuse. Got mascara in your eye there? Okay. You all comfortably feel like you are not being followed anymore. That the nation of Prosper uh, gave up chase or decided curiosity. we weren't worth it. Yeah, for whatever reason, they decided not to investigate you all further. Even the owl stopped. Correct. Thank goodness. Now we can walk at a more reasonable pace, and I ask Simon that question. And he gives that answer. Um, you all would stop for about a short rest. It's about 1.30 in the morning at this point. So by the time you complete this journey, it's 5.30 in the morning. And you need another long haul and you'll be at Night Hollow. Okay, so basically we have to find a place to camp and then next day we'll be there. Yep. Would um would the horses still get exhaustion if we dismounted and walked and led them? Or do they just need a straight up stop altogether? You'd be able to burn a half a day's journey doing that. They would be fine walking at a leisurely leisurely pace. Do you guys Want to do that? Just keep putting a little bit extra distance? Yeah, as long as I can grab a bite. I mean, yeah, they do need another hour break before moving on. Okay. Um, I'm assuming since Panoply did not get a chance to hunt and Arvin and Wait. Kaim... And she does her thing. I am... I mean, I know nobody needs healing, but you can eat one good berry. Just eat these, and I'm like, I will give e one to each of the horses, and I'm like, here, Kaim, you can have these two extra, because I know you're going to need it. Or just, oh, does Gilfie eat? No, she doesn't. Okay, Kaim, you just take these two extras, in case. Okay. That takes care of rations for the day. <laughs> but for yesterday, I think you and I need to eat burn a ration, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Alright, you spend an hour essentially short resting, eating good berries, letting the horses get water, all of that, and then you can essentially walk for another four hours before the horses absolutely need a long rest. You're about a, a half day away from Night Hollow, unless you want to push the horses into exhaustion. I would say no. I don't 
don't care There's... too much for the draft horses, but Ben and Jerry, uh... I don't like the idea of returning this horse in a terrible condition either. That that doesn't make friends with the horse people, you know? I mean, if we tipped him well enough, so I, I think that we should rest because it looks like we're not being followed. But if there's any indication or any thought from anybody that we need to move, I think it would be worth it. <laughs> No, are we, we all rest. still on the same the same thought that we're not being followed? Yeah, yeah, I think I think us walking and leading the horses put another good bit of distance that I'm not overly concerned. Yeah, let's just get off the road a little bit and can you do a thing to oh, see shit. if anybody comes by on the road? Like you do that weird thing sometimes, don't you, Turxian? Um how wide is the road? Uh, it's pretty wide. It's so the the main road itself would be large enough to essentially march an army down it, and then you can see that there's like offshoot roads, uh, dirt paths, and whatever going through it. The Nahusian Pass itself is a good like 10 miles wide okay and uh it's well like midday at this point yeah it's about 10 30. Yeah. um i mean i can set a small alarm but i think the unless there's a really large group the chance of it being triggered is kind of small and I can only alarm something that's like about a 20 foot like cube area. Maybe just do a piece like where we go off the road, just in case, so we know we're not followed. Just like go half hour off the road again. Sure. And if you uh, want to help me find the area that, you know, it looks like a tracker might f try and follow us. I can put an alarm there. Oh, just like right where we go. <laughs> just like, uh, I mean, you, what you look for is you look are you for tracks or places that sticks are broken or um, where the, the horses take a shit. Frankly. Okay. Uh, Turkson will use his uh, ritual feature to ritually cast alarm in between like two trees as we break off from the path okay I think we have to be let's say it last eight hours and um, as long as we stay within a mile of it uh, I will be alerted if somebody passes through this I will start a fire when I get to camp and go hunt. I'll just go further north. All right, you can make a nature survival check. Or at our resting point, maybe we should take a little break. Yeah, we will. Yeah. Just wanted to roll that. Aww. Uh -uh. Alrighty, so Panoply, you come back empty-handed, unfortunately. Everybody else is tending to the camp, getting it set up, uh, setting up a fire. Uh, it is 11 in the morning, so the long rest will break at... Math is hard. 7, Seven. at night? seven at night and this is where we'll take a break so we'll come back at uh 45 after cool all right
as you finish your long rest, Turxian has been examining this professor orb that he has. And you find out that the the sentient being inside of the orb, which has the personality of a scholar, is named Elias Zilric. That's X I L R I C. Speaking with Elias or the the sentient object, you learn that this Professor Orb has a very in-depth understanding of the creation and inner workings of Warforged, of very specifically gem dragons, the formation of a group called the Venandi, and the ascension of the god Prospero. Wow, okay. The, uh... Venandri, who are they? make an intelligence check. So as you ask this orb these questions, it swirls into this mist, and the orb tells you of an organization of individuals created by Prospero with the objective of finding essentially finding anything arcane throughout the world. They look for portals the name Venandi essentially means sort of like hunter. And they, not only do they look for anything arcane and portals, but they essentially stop at nothing to gather the information that they need and to safeguard in the name of Prospero any ancient arcane items, scripture, learnings, teachings that they deem too worthy for the common person to wield. They are technically used as a secret police force by the Nation of Prospero. Their creed is knowledge is power and status is power and obedience creates power. Um, they believe that those who outthink their enemy or their adversary will become the victors, and they believe that the ends do justify the means. Um, there's also within the Venandi a group called the Venatori, and they are es essentially arcane assassins. And the group is led by an individual called Velrenith Adararn, which I can put that in chat. And he is essentially Prospero's second disciple. He is a old, ancient drow.
Wow. It's a lot. Um, I think I'll probably focus on that for the duration of my time, and I can worry about the other topics at a later date. Yeah, you get the concept that uh, they're not fun people to run into. If you've ever seen the agent from Firefly, it gives off those vibes. All right, you all finish your rest. You want to head on into Night Hollow? Yes. Do yes. you think we'll be watched for at the gates or anything? No. Maybe she... we're, no? We're good. This is chill. Didn't Tyrion say this is, you know, uh, whatever the word is? Neutral. Neutral? Yeah. Uh, do we have any obvious signs, like, everything stowed away that, except for those bracers of defense, but they look like any old bracers of defense, right? Pretty boring. Sure. I mean, I am wearing someone else's skin over my skin as a jet, as a joke. What? I'm just, I'm just kidding. I didn't grab the skin. <laughs> Some fava beans and Chianti. Don't we have the, uh, the head of... It's in the bag. Okay. Yeah, I still say we just head for the end, and I'm sure they will let us know, or they will come find us. I'm sure they know, they will know when we return. But let's not go straight to their residence. Let's let them contact us. Let's go to a different gate. Let's go to a different end. Yeah. Alright, you will all come to Night Hollow at about 11.30 at night. Which gate do you want to enter? The southeastern gate? The west gate or the north gate? You guys are coming from the east. Well, let's circle around and come in from the north. Is that where the other guy was harassing people, though, once? Yes. Yeah, that's where the other in the, the in or the originally. Is. So, I'm sorry, the options were the, the north end, which we normally come in, the southeastern gate, which is the most. Uh, that's where we left from closer to right. the horse. And was there another third gate? There's a west gate. Go to the west gate. Sure. Alright, you all probably spend a good 30 minutes essentially circling the entire town as you're going to the complete opposite gate. I don't have that one set up. Okay. So the West Gate is where most of the individuals who come from either the Nation of Prospero or the sort of southern regions like Steep Light and those border cities, they all enter from this direction usually. This area definitely has more of a Nation of Prospero feel to it. And generally when they are all here, this is where the entire group, um, like Malkadia, Saren, stay at or where they reside usually. There is the inn 
called Nepenthe's Lot. This is also where you usually go to find the Society of the Obsidian Hunt. They're screen loaded. Do I need to hit refresh? You might need to. Okay. No prob, just checking. I tried to move to a different screen then realized I don't have that one fleshed out. What screen are we on? Are we on North Ankara? Yeah. Okay, okay, good. My screen was just black. I was teleported to hell. <clears throat> so, are we just shacking up and waiting for the Wallach State to contact us? Yeah, but I mean, it's 11.30 at night. Probably want to right. put the horses just... and sleep. Eventually, though, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, pl longer term plans other than that, I don't think we really had. Okay. I hope they contact us soon before that head rots in that bag. Oh, right. That would be nice. I don't see why we can't just go there. Go to them. We know where they are. Or we know where they meet us anyway. We don't know if that's where they stay. Either way, in case we have you know, eyes following us, I'd rather let them be the ones to summon us, so... At least they have some knowledge. Well, I'm going to walk the two horses back that we had rented and then hit the inn. And we paid up front for all of them, right? Yeah. Correct. Cool. Maybe we should go now and get rid of stuff in case we're questioned. Get rid of stuff like the loot we picked up? The head, mainly. Eh, it's in a bag. I mean, it is midnight. Yeah. But bedtime. I mean, they're spies. Yeah, it's bedtime. Alright, can we pay for some rooms at the, the newer inn? The different inn? Let's not do the one in the Nation of Prosper. Let's do, like, the other side of town. If not the dwarves, then like the dragony people. You can technically stay at the Society of the Obsidian Hunt. Let's do that. Cuddle up next to some bear rugs. Is there uh, a fee for staying there? Because we're members, or there is. It's reduced for members to two silver pieces per person. Normally it's a uh, five silver piece per night per person. A little more than your nor average in normally. All right, Turkson will pay that out of the group fund. Um, there aren't many people here at the moment. Um, even though the map shows a bunch of people. Because it is midnight. There's a couple people drinking still. Uh, but you do notice on the wall is the head of a white moose. Oh, nice. Somebody got oh. it. There's always something else. And otherwise, you guys can rest for the night and take a long rest. I think I'm already all rested up. You'll wake up in the morning. Wonderful breakfast. You're pretty sure it's like elk sausages and 
that type of uh, breakfast from this place as opposed to, you know, more city folk meal. This is definitely more hunter's feasts. Hmm. Stay here more often. Well, while we're here, could I talk to Mr. Powder? Absolutely. Let's find out if we've got any new monster hunting now that it looks like the moose has been captured and killed. And he tells you, yes, one of our regular groups, uh, the Grim Company, they captured that one pretty fine looking animal, if I uh, do say so myself. Yeah, it looks good on the walls here, that's for sure. Yeah, you see, we have those uh, two gorillons uh, stuffed up and taxidermied. Also adding to the look of the, the ambiance of the room. Yeah, it's a pretty looking place. Well, do you have any other current contracts out for different creatures in the area? Oh, absolutely. I mean, depending upon how you're feeling, we always have different, you know, tiers of animals out there. Uh, I mean, sort of gives you a big giant post on a wall. And essentially how this works is the obsidian hunt has different tiers and you have to have completed something from the previous tier to get to the next tier bracket. So your tier one tag is only a 10 gold tag up front and left on the board he has... I'll post this. And I presume the Gorillons were at least a tier one. Correct. Okay. So he has Gorillon, Onkeg, White Moose, Manticore, Albear, and Winterwolf up there, but Gorillon and White Moose are crossed off on there. And he goes, but if you're, uh, you know, feeling lucky... Like, we've got these ones now. They're a little bit tougher, and I mean, I know you've killed... Been able to kill one, but just want to forewarn you, some of these... Some of these are meant for uh, more veteran explorers. You guys still look a little green to me, but... You know, here, here's the, the next group of monsters we're looking for which of the ones are on the tier 2 list like these here the umber hulk a medusa don't look that one in the uh hair eyes stuff um there's a big old beastie named thousand teeth well that's what we call him but big old giant crocodile and then uh chimera it's a interesting flying creature if you ever go out into a deep, deep uh, sea, maybe uh, the one in the Kaja Conclave, big giant creature known as a Suavian Basilisk. And I know, well, you know, if a Gorillon wasn't enough for you, a big giant ape, and then there's this big old thing, it's called a T Rex, well, a, a Tyrannosaurus Rex, and well, we, we call it the King of Feathers. Interesting. I don't think it's on this continent, though. Um, and was there anything other than the White Moose that was close by in the forest in the south? Well, you'd have to do some digging on that. I mean, manticores and chimeras can usually be found in the in the mountains, uh, owl bears are in foresty areas, and winter wolves anywhere where there's a lot of snow. Onkegs, well, 
they come from the ground, so maybe like mines or caves or yeah, something like that. And uh, well, <laughs> the the other the the tier two monsters, which I should mention, those are fifty gold pieces for a tag. But I assure you that the pay is quite handsome for them. And it's been a while since we've done this. But does the tag need to be purchased before we encounter these things and bring them back? Yeah. If you if you purchase it up front, it's normal price. If you purchase it post-mortem, that's once you killed it for, you know, less intelligent folk. Uh, you have to pay double the tag fee and another adventurer can uh, contest your claim to the kill. And, well, in the court of law, which, you know, it's more like guidelines than law, but I'm the final say here. He who has a tag wins the claim. Fair enough. Well, we'll go talk with the group and see if any of these pique our interest. Any other shops here where spells and a couple weapons, I think? Yes, there's uh, Bing Johnson and Thensory, the alchemists. There's Kraik, the uh, little kinku, who has a bunch of random arcane accoutrements. And then Findava, the Arakakra forge master. Kind of there are a bunch double. of different individuals around, though. Including four individuals that you hadn't seen before who are boasting about killing a white moose. What did you say, Storm? I'm saying double. <laughs> Had a bunch of ales already? I see two Tarpsians. Oh, yeah, there are. Oh, oh, what the... I couldn't see myself, so I pulled my own token down for myself. <laughs> So, the White Moose has already been captured. Uh, is there another? So, when we, if we get like a tier two token, is it, or uh, whatever you call that thing, is that tag. for? Yeah, is the tag for any creature, or do you specifically have to get one for one particular creature? You have to get one for a particular creature. Oh, good grief! I don't think we really have any idea what we could run across then. I don't think it'd be worth it to pick up multiples for 50 gold either, right? I mean, we could just wait and see where we're going next. We just yeah. don't really know yet. That's true. T-Rex sounds pretty cool, though. He said it's not... What continent is it on? Nah, I don't know. It seemed a little out of our range, so I didn't pay attention. Uh, depending on what we're doing, I think we're just chilling to get people to meet up with us, but I'd like to shop with some sort of merchant who's got some clothing available. Yeah. I mean, do we want to just divide up the stuff? Well, we have to wait for them to pay us. Right. Just for my own personal appeal, since I'm not wearing leather armor anymore. I need to spruce myself up a little bit. Are you looking for some fancy clothes? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Looking for something to look nice in. Something where it can be mobile. Marvin's color is probably closer to, you know, orange and gold. Sure, you can definitely find some fancy clothes. There are common clothes for five silver pieces, or really, really fine clothes for 15 gold pieces. Really, really fine? Wow. Yeah, like, kind of like what the, uh, the leaders of town were wearing. Well, or you could find something in the middle, about five gold pieces. I 
I mean, I want something, uh, you know, adventurous. I don't want to look like a, a someone who's in charge. I need something that flows nicely that I can move around in. So maybe that middle range would be good. I don't want to be too hoity-toity. So Arvin's out uh, looking for clothes. Probably takes you 30 minutes to eat breakfast and talk around. Anything else that Arvin's looking for? No, just clothes. What does everybody else want to do while Arvin goes and peruses? Piano please sticking close to Kaim and Turxian, looking nervously at all the people. What about Simon? I assume we left him in our in our room for now. Yeah, what, what time is checkout? Ah, uh, you know, around ten. Could just pay for another night <laughs> if we have to. Good. They are individual beds and rooms, so each room is uh every room you want is two silver pieces. Panoply takes out like they're sitting around a table or whatever. Uh, she is pulling like a very large tarantula looking spider off her horn and just she's doing something with it on the table. Uh, Kaim, as you go to stand up one of these times, a hunter-looking individual bumps into you and essentially like apologizes, uh, spills your beer and offers to pay for a new round for you. Hey, watch it, buddy. Eh, sorry, didn't see you there. Let me get you a new one. Uh, don't, don't worry about it. It's okay. Oh, no, I, I insist. Can't, can't spill beer in the morning. In the morning. And he goes r rushing off. Um, and about five minutes later, Barmaid comes by with a, a beer. And as you pick it up, you notice there's like a note on the bottom of it. Oh. Thank you. And uh, he'll pick up the beer and take note. Drink the beer while he's reading the note. And it essentially says, um, noon, normal place. Ah, uh, typical. All right. Kaim will walk up, look around for everyone. I'm assuming Turxian and Panoply are still with me. Or near me, at least. Yeah. Maybe. Panoply is just... She's definitely doing something with her pet spider. Hey, Penny. I think we got our sign. What time is it? She reads it. Uh, what, what time is it? It'll be about 8.30 in the morning. Somewhere between 8.30 and 9. Uh, we should probably make our way over there in a couple hours. Yeah. Hey, Turkson, you see that? Yeah, well, what did it say? Noon. Normal place. Yep, the usual place. Can I... I want to ask you guys something. So... When we're doing stuff, like, I, I kind of wish Arvin were here, but I don't... Hopefully he gets back from shopping. So, when you guys are... We're all together, what do you think would help? Because I think I could train Tharos here to do something. But I don't know what would be best. Like, I could heal more? I think I could heal. I could train him to, like, stitch you up, Kaim. Or I could... 
Like, I think he could fight. I know that sounds weird, because he's not that big, but I think it would work. Honestly, if he's gonna be useful, I would say have him ready to help heal. I think that would be the best for Xian. I could make us hide better too. Like I'm always for that, but can he make me quieter? I don't think anything can. Um I guess my question would be you know, it's hard to say without knowing what his capabilities could be. I mean, typically not sure you need much help hiding, but um, you, you, guys you also you also stand pretty far back, I believe, right? So would he even be able to get to whoever needed healing or attacking? Um, I mean, I can move around more than I do. I just stand back because I don't like you have that web spell, and I don't want to, you know, get in the middle of it, especially if you can't see me at the time. Um, I, I think, like I could throw him into battle, and it would be okay. So I think you, I could be far back. What if you shot an arrow with him on it, and then I, he would go and heal that person? I think just throwing him's better. I think, I think that's overcomplicated. <laughs> <laughs> We can maybe have Gilfy airdrop him somewhere, too. How oh, I think... She, like, does a flick of her wrist. I think I think it would... I think just kind of a throw would work. And I, I'm pretty sure, like, it would be fine for the healing, too. I don't... I'm not that far back. Or you, usually I'm not. I know it doesn't seem like I'm always there, but... Like I said, I'm just not trying not to be in the middle. We could ask Garvin too, because I know he's been healing and I just don't. But he was really brave, like after you were looking rough, Kaim. So I don't know what would be helpful. I should be okay. You think, always say that, though. I think and healing I'm... potions are expensive. And it seems like Arvin's the only one that has any gift for healing people. Might not be a bad route to take. Out of character real quick, how much HP does, uh, what's his name, Theros? Basically, we're deciding between the spells Healing Spirit or Summon Beast, if that helps. Uh, and what are you... Sorry, what? Just role-playing the, the spider would be part of it. Um, so, healing... Just, like, if I am learning to do something, healing spirit would only be effective three times because my wisdom isn't that high, which is my spellcasting modifier. Uh, but it's a creature that can move and touch people, essentially, and heal three times during... A concentration span. Summon beast would have its own attack. Like a... Do you like that we basically all have an option to heal? Both of them take concentration, which means I can't hunter's mark, but it might be worth it in extreme situations. Basically, like, if Arvin comes back to you, like, how are you feeling about what you do in the group? Like, are you happy to be the only healer? Do you want help? Do you want somebody else who's really tough and rough up front like Kaim? I mean, I can basically, um, it's okay with DM just spend five gold on a new outfit and head on back. Yeah. You come back around nine. Okay, now we can actually... Yeah. Tips you the note. So we got a little bit of time to spare. So catch me up on Thanatos. You were asking if I was comfortable with my role in the party. 
Yeah, like, do you want to be the only healer? Do you need help? Like, or do you need somebody up who's rough and tough like Kaim? Like, what do you what do you need? I feel like the dynamic is pretty good. Um, another option for someone to be able to heal is great, but you already have got the good berries, which have been helpful. Uh, Kaim's got his own heal, which has been helpful. I've got my own, which is not anything spectacular, but seems to get us out of a few pinches, and Simon and Tyrkseen are always around to stuff a potion down someone's throat. So I think we're at a pretty good spot. It doesn't seem like we need anything in the midst of combat. Uh, healing seems to be more like after the fact. But were you trying to decide between different options of what you could do? Yeah. And did what other options were available? I could make us hide. I could summon a beast. Or, which would be like a tanky kind of a thing. And then I could uh, heal. A tanky kind of a beast. If he's tanky, that he might be even jealous. be... For sure. But... It's not going to steal from Kaim's Thunder, is it? I mean, no, it's no, gonna no. have. It would have thirty hit points, and I could up rank it later potentially. Someone to share the brunt of the damage with me would be you amazing. Get beat to hell, cousin. And there are times when I feel like I have no choice but to be a shield for Arvin or Turxian. I would say that a thirty hit point tank is more valuable than whatever heal you possibly could provide. Yeah, that's 30 hit points that could not be going towards me. Versus okay. how much could he heal? Uh, it, it would be... And out obviously of, it's all situational. Out of yeah. character, a lot. Uh, 1d6 hit points. Um, and it could do it three times, like, but it would be three separate turns. So it'd be like a total of 3d6. Well, it's that it's for every character that can go into the area, right? So if we all ran into the area during those three turns, it's actually doing 4d6 healing per turn for three turns. So that's 12d6 healing potential over those 18 seconds. But the sp they modified healing spirit so the spirit can heal a number of times equal to one plus your spellcasting ability modifier, which would be three. But so also, after oh, that, it would disappear. They? Yeah. Also keep they in mind, we have three it. ranged. And the person needing the healing the most is usually a way for everyone. I want a giant spider tank. I want a giant spider tank. Okay. Yeah. Can I ride him into battle? I don't think it works like that. <laughs> God damn Guys, it. really quick, I think I buried the lead, but... Eh? Eh? Do a little spin? What do we think? I reach out and touch this... The satin pantaloons and... Are you sure those are going to be okay in the woods? Absolutely. Bought them specifically for that purpose. What do color is it? Uh, orange, gold. Darker. I can't decide if I'm going to call you orange or banana man. <laughs> ah, Kaim, you're just jealous. You gotta wear that giant heavy armor all the time. I mean, we could spot you a mile away. No, no, no. I blend in the leaves very well. In the fall, maybe? <laughs> It's nice. Thank you. I can always throw a cloak over it if I'm trying to be a little more stealthy. Is it like two, a two-sided jacket and the other side is just like a dark color? Oh, that'd be pretty cool. Hold on, hold on. Let me get into stuff cold. mode. Is that emo? That would have cost 15 gold. Double-sided? Yeah. Oh shoot, if I knew they had double-sided, maybe I'd go back for that. Is that a thing? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell yeah, I'm going back. Can I, can I exchange that? 
Yeah, you you buy a fifteen, so it'll be more like nine thirty by the time you come back. Yeah, that's fine. Because you'll you'll have like a custom tailored double sided, uh, fall color jacket pants. Okay. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I subtracted that off. Boom. All right, while we're chilling, uh, is there anywhere I can step outside and do a little bit of archery practice? <laughs> yeah, you can go to the garrison. Hell yeah, I'd do that. Expend a few bolts. Yep. Sure, Panoply would join you for a little while. Sure. Actually, I wouldn't mind sparring with you, Kaim. To... Yeah. It's like, I never get up close and personal, which is great, but I didn't want to lose my edge, you know? You have an extra sword. I could teach you how to hold it. How to properly have a correct stance. Let's, let's just do unarmed. Okay. So you all do that. What does Turkseen want to do for essentially two and a half hours? Um, study this new spellbook. All right. You have the list of all the spells. Yep. Don't know if there's any that I immediately wanted to copy over. So her spellbook is written. All wizard spellbooks are written in their own shorthand and notes and symbols and all of that. Hers is much darker. And by darker, I mean just in theme and symbols used and and the spell selection. Just kind of get a feeling going through her spellbook that she was a very broody individual. Gotcha. Yeah, I think for now... Um, I'm just gonna... just I'm not planning on copying any of them quite yet. Your spellbook actually opens up to like a blank page expecting you to copy. And then as soon as you kind of like give the notion that you're not copying a spell into your spellbook, your spellbook slams shut. Don't be jealous. I presume, by the way, I went back into the room with uh, Simon, not just mm -hmm. doing this in the middle. Great. All right. As so long as you all have anything else to do, we'll fast forward to noon o'clock. We good? Yeah, come back and Kaim and Panoply are a little bit roughed up. She's got a bloody lip. His nose is bleeding a little. I feel like you took out some pent-up anger on me there. Well, I mean, I don't know. I'm just trying to stay sharp, you know? Yeah, you are. It's Whatever I did, I'm sorry. Jesus. Sometimes you're stupid, but I love you, cuz. I love you too. Let's head on to what's her face's place. Mm. Do you, I we like are waiting for like Trixian's reading a book when we get back and do, do you need me yet? Just asks him. I don't think so. Okay. You'll ask though, right? Like you're not shy about that? Yeah, no, um I I think for now there's I'm okay. Okay. 
Time doesn't ask for things when he needs them because he's proud. So. Yeah, there's a lot. A lot of these spells in the spell book that I'm really excited for, but I, I think they're still just a little beyond my capabilities just yet. Yeah, kind of got me with the right hook. I just can't. He's way stronger than I am at this point. Don't tell him I said that. Secret safe with me. Okay, let's uh, go and find Kind's crush. She here? You wouldn't see her. You'll make your way to the normal location, which is just a very generic looking house. Uh, you are greeted by Erfonia Zais and Sabira and Talim. Greeted is always a loose term when it comes to those two, as they're very cold and off-putting. Fancy clothes on. They take no notice. I flourish. Uh, Sabira, as usual, is always looking outside the windows at various times, um, whereas Erfonia Zace is sitting down at a desk, and there is a large sack of gold on the desk. Oh, ladies, were you not looking for any evidence of the job being done? Oh, no, we have evidence we want to get rid of. Because we brought some just in case. Is it safe, like, to do something kind of weird? I suppose. Okay, Turkzian. Turkzian kind of like, like he's disgusted by it, like, pulls the head out and like holds it away from him. They look <laughs> at Turkzian. Um, fairly expressionless look on their face. Sabira goes back to looking outside the windows. Nerfonia pushes the uh, bag of gold forward and says, Rather barbaric, don't you think so? Well, we didn't exactly have another great way of proving that we yeah. had the job done. Plus, like, don't people collect these for some reason? I don't... I don't know what you like to do. Which some thing? people, yes. Not us. But, um... I'm sure we can figure out a way to dispose of this... future reference. If you do any jobs for us, you don't need to bring back the head. Can I take a piece of hair? Duly noted. Like just a clip. Wait. Roll hair. persuasion. Wait. Do you, you want me to get something for you? No, panoply. <laughs> oh no. Stammer your way to victory. Come on. I don't think that would be very sanitary. And haven't you had enough time to take one of her hairs? Well, I... I guess I don't necessarily need one. It's just... Never mind. You okay. said, um, Sabira's hanging out by the window, right? She kind of paces around the room and looks through different windows at times. Um, Kaim will walk up next to her when she's at a window and strike up a conversation. Hey, beautiful day outside, huh? What you looking for? Curious individuals that smell less than savory. Dangerous people, or 
expecting somebody to be watching. You never know. Should we be, we be worried? Possibly. Were you seen? Uh... Yeah. By I... an owl and a robot dog. It, I don't know if it saw us, but it could smell us. Probably if it's like a dog. I don't know if they're like real dogs. Before we get too deep in this conversation, um, we're getting paid for this job, right? I'm gonna grab the bag. <laughs> That is yours. Thank you, I believe kindly. somebody else gave you a little extra. She did. I have it. And I hold up the bag. Good. Then this was 750 large. Correct. Tip of the cap. If uh, somebody would want to uh, get a hold of that other person, how would they? Depends what you're looking for. She oh, prefers no, not to be seen. Panoply nods approvingly. However, you've probably seen her throughout the town often. Gotcha. Thank you. So you think that, um the nation of Prospero might have caught a glimpse of you. It's possible. Uh, Is there something we need to be worried about? I don't know how much of a glimpse they may have caught. Um, we were camping probably a good eight hours away from the lab, and we noticed a familiar flying overhead and when we saw that they were starting to head our way, we packed up camp and started making like we were making our way back down the pass. And we were followed for a little while by said familiar and some sort of uh, warforged dog or beast. But they eventually gave up and left us alone. Shoot. Don't know if they were just curious because we were in the area and we broke camp or not but we weren't necessarily right next to the lab either we were close to the actual road uh is si we forgot simon oh i assumed we had him do we have him we brought him check with us checkout was at 10 unless we paid for another room Okay, so we have him. Simon, do you have that stuff that we uh, <clears throat> were given? Yes. These are the two people that would look at it. He pulls out a couple papers. His eyebrows furrow. Or, well, his robotic eyebrows furrow. And he hands the papers to Erfonia Azace, and he says, There seems to be one missing. Does Panoply remember the stuff that was in there? Yeah. Is there a book or something missing? Um, one of the ledgers is missing. Did any of you interact with Simon? Where you would have lost it? Or would have... Did you exchange books with Turkson or anything? I was reading them when we broke camp. Shit. Oh, fuck. Well, no, they definitely know we were at the lab. <clears throat> I think.
Which book seems to be missing? You said it was a ledger? Yeah, but if they know where it came from, then that's a direct association because it was in the camp we had just occupied. I think it was a sales receipt. So now they think we've got a war forged? I mean, no. besides you? It listed who? I was trying to memorize them in case they were destroyed. Do you remember that one? No. We left too quickly. Sabira not making contact with Kaim and still looking out the window just nonchalantly states you could always create a distraction that could keep them preoccupied in the meantime. Such as? Well, I'm sure if their Warforged went haywire in town that... That would be more important to them at the moment than finding who went to the factory. Would it affect everybody's warforged in town? I look at Simon. No, a 30 foot diameter or 30 foot radius area. There's only one patrol left in town, the other went to investigate. And our most favorite individual, Sir Saren, is not here currently. While we're thinking about it, um, we have had a few close calls with Simon. Would you guys have any place to put him up for us in town I know he's not always keen on adventuring but we did promise that we would help him find his master we can keep him secret what would you like Simon I don't want to be disassembled Sabira. Oh, don't worry. He is, uh, important. Last thing we would want is for him to fall into the hands of the nation of Prospero or <sighs> disappear like Dr. Therbly Crowleus. How, well, how closely were you working with Dr. Crolius? Close enough. Have you had any luck trying to hunt him down? Figure out where he may have gone? In short answer, no. Long answer is we are looking into it. Where was he last? Last we know he was in his lab, the place that you obtained Simon.
He is a curious individual with a lot of resources and connections at his hand. Egreth Runai was just one such connection, albeit a loose one. We can keep Simon secret and safe, and if you ever wish to see him, we can always arrange that. I would just say, um, you owe us a favor that might be mutually exclusive. I'm sorry, you said we would owe you a favor? Yes, but it's in your benefit. What is this favor? She pulls out a small satchel and opens it up on the table and five little crystals fall on the table, which Turxian recognizes as something that he has on his person. She says, a distraction. To the nation of Prospero. Take it, they look like the electromagnetic pulse. Yep. How do they work, or how do you, you use them? You crush them. You can do so in the palm of your hand. will happen if we crush him? Theoretically, every sentient object within 30 feet will um, malfunction. Where? Do you, I mean, do you want all five of coming off? There's only four of us. I will take two. Would do they have to be crushed, or do you think if they were thrown, would they work also, or theoretically dropped from very high? With enough force, you could throw or drop them. They aren't incredibly delicate, but they are essentially made of glass. Where have... and when would we be doing this? When the nation patrols through town with their warforged. If you're curious about anybody knowing where it came from, it's undetectable. And when we do use these, does it show where the origin of where it was used? No. Okay. Kaim, Kaim, I think that's what the word undetectable means. Oh. I thought if we just had them, nobody consented or something. I don't think you should take two. Does it have to be like in a, a really close amount of time, like at the same time, or just kind of like when they all are activated, it works? You technically don't need all five, but just in case. Okay. As long as they are within 30 feet, it should work. Obviously, the more you have, the more likely it will create a malfunction. That's why I offer five. I think there are six Warforged left, five humanoids, and one steel dog. Does the steel dog get affected? Yes. Okay. We'll make sure Simon's not nearby, and if you have anything on yourself that has a mind of its own, you might want to safeguard it in that 
haversack that you have. Give, give me one of those ones you have, Kaim. We'll hand it over. I think I could do two. And Gilfi could do yours, Turxian. You think? Um, probably. Although, if it's undetectable, uh, I think her dropping it from a distance would be, you know, easier just to figure out what happened than if somebody just walked by and crushed it. Well, it's like you wouldn't have to be in sight. I mean, Kaim, you're, you're gonna be obvious. The, no, I mean, you don't but think if she, obvious? I I think if she drops something nearby and they they see or hear something, you know, shatter nearby, and then they all, you know, malfunction, it'd be pretty easy for them to figure out what happened. If we just walked by them and you know, crushed it in our palm and then kept the pieces on us might be harder for them to figure it out. But if they saw us walking by, wouldn't they assume that we had something to do with it? I guess it depends on where we did it. If we did it in a big crowded area, it might be hard for them to figure out who who, or what did it. Did they ever we... patrol the amphitheater? I'm or the ask. market? Yeah. And they go through the markets and the gate. They don't usually go near the amphitheater. The market might be a good place. It would give us time to deliberate on how to safeguard your identity from the nation of Prospero. So the offer stands. We uh, keep Simon hidden and protected and you do this deed. I'm gonna walk over to the others and say, I think we should do this. I, I, I agree with Kaim. Although, I have a few things I might want to hide if I'm going to be anywhere near those when they go off. Who's someone in town that would be very non-suspicious, I ask, and like, just somebody, I guess, just any of the townspeople, probably. The regular people of Night Hollow? Yeah. Or one of those dragonborn from the Kaja Conclave? Can you point out Abdumiel? Yeah. I mean, he is not hard to find. How tall is he? Close to seven feet, probably. Is he always in town? Yes. Well, for now, he seems to have an issue on his hand that he might leave town for. Something about draconians. Um, but he is a very large golden dragonborn. Thank you. I think he is the only gold one in town. So, so do we want to go do this, like, when is market? 
Is it just you want to go do it now? Uh, do you need to? Get it, should we get another room? They always go into the market about 2 p.m. part of their patrol. I need to go to the market anyway. So we have a deal? Yeah. We have a deal? Deal. Right. Promise to keep Simon safe. Thank you. Simon looks all to you guys, almost as if it's sort of that, like, sad little puppy leaving its owner, and then waddles over to Erfonia, Zeis, and Sibir, and Talim. That's where we're in tonight's episode. Dun dun dun!